Welcome back to another episode of our Toyota Land Cruiser 80 series build. Previously, the 80 was unfortunately involved in an accident and needed a front end rebuild, which snowballed into us deciding to do a turbo barra conversion while we had the whole thing apart. So far, we have stripped down the 80, removed everything from the Ford territory we are using, installed billet oil pump gears and heavy duty valve springs into the engine. Got the ZF Auto adapted to the cruiser transfer, mounted to the four litre barra block and into the 80 series. Got a big turbo mounted with exhaust manifold, intake and injectors, mounted all the new panels, radiator, inner cooler and fabbed up the bar work. Today's episode is an absolutely huge one though, because it's time to get the 80 all wired up, turn the key and see if this engine will run after months of work. Can we can we do something else too? Because it's it's killing me. I just want to know if it's gonna run. You know, start your bastard. Yeah. yeah let's start go. Your bastard. Let's let's give it to Big you. moment. Yeah. Spa. Why don't we have spa? So technically you should have that. We should we should have spa. I'm thinking now, the only reason we don't have that, if that's all gonna be off the same circuit, mm -hmm. it'll be a mobile holder. I thought we sent that away. We did. Proudly supported by Opus Campers, Ultimate Nine, Tread, Superior Engineering, GME, and in part by. It's about 7.30 on a Friday morning, so I am still half asleep, but we've got another big day in the shed here working on the 80. Todd's here. The plan today, we've got a heap of stuff lined out. So we've got some stainless, is that intercooler and radiator piping? Yeah, intercooler large, radiator just that single Small pipe. Small one, and then this is a bit of silicon connection joiners for them as well. So this is all race work, silicon, and then this I got from ECS Exhaust, I believe it was. Oil and water fittings isn't it for the turbo drain yeah yeah so we're going to weld some of them in today get the oil water feed in feed out lines for the turbo done and we also got a battery box as well which i'll show and then over here which we we're just playing around with before I turn the cameras on gonna get the air box mounted up here i forget where i got it from do you what brand is this i don't even know psycho psycho performance so we got a ls air box which doesn't exactly work but it somewhat works doesn't it <laughs> we'll make it work we couldn't find a barra air box we could choose between a factory toyota one and an ls one i think we worked out the factory toyota one <laughs> it would have been easier but that's what we got now so gonna make that work bought another battery box because on this 80 the battery is over the other side but some 80s come with dual battery so i bought this brand new from all four x four spares thing is like 150 bucks for a genuine battery box first step is going to be pull bar work grill everything back off the front here that we put on the end of last episode to make it look nice for the toyota show that's all coming back off so that Todd can get in here and do the inner cooler piping. What's your plan? How we go about it? So obviously this is the inner cooler, which we need to get plumbed up. Where's it need? So you got an in and an out. Where do they need to go to? Yeah, so you're in. Well, we'll start on the turbo side. So you got your in intake, comes through your snorkel if you got one. Air box into your turbo. Your turbo spins up, brings up your pressure like your PSI, your boost, comes through. We're going to bring it out down through here because we've got a front mount in the cooler. So I like to go all steel instead of um, rubber bands just for expansion. It's not that you run a big boost in this anyway, but the one thing you've got to look out for is because we're body mounted in a cooler and you're engine mounted turbo, you're going to get a lot of movement in between. So if you go all steel, hard line it up, you're going to get rattles, brakes. So you do have to have some silicon in there, like right, just for some get, uh, forgiveness. Yeah, so I'll tack all these up and then I can take them home and I'll purge and tig them at home. Yeah, so it's mostly, up. so you're gonna use mostly stainless. Why do you use, what is it like, some people use stainless, some people use alley. Why are you going stainless in this application? I just like using stainless, period. Honestly, I think it looks better. <laughs> yeah. But each to your own, you know. And I find with the stainless bends, they're all, they're all spot on with their size for tigging. And so you've obviously had the whole saw, you've done that side done over this there, side. you've got to do this side here through the rad support. This one, where's this one going to go to? Is that this to one's going to go up to your intake. Yeah, and then straight in. Shoot up into here. Into there. So we'll have a rubber coupling there. Yeah. 
That's the first half of the intercooler piping done, the hot side. Now on to the second half, the cool side. And then that's the other side all done. So out of the inner core, up through the rad support there, comes out and then into your intake. Once again, I just get pulled off the car and Todd can finish welding and making that all nice and neat at home and then we can plug it back in next time. Next job, water lines for the turbo. What's the plan, Todd? How's it work? One of the pipes here from the water pump, so I can tap into that. I'll weld a fitting into it. Then there's one, another pipe on the bottom side of the thermostat, which runs around the back here anyway, so I can weld another fitting into that. And then, yeah, I've got an in and out for the turbo. These are welded-in water fittings that come from Raceworks. So it has to obviously be cut in, welded in to an in pipe where you're gonna bring the cool one from to, to cool the turbo. And then once it goes through the turbo, same thing on another pipe, out, welding fitting, and the cool one can head back into the cooling system. I just had to duck out for an hour, but I'm back now and Todd's been smashing through it, coming up four o'clock, so we'll probably call that a day there. Successful day though, heaps of stuff done. So he's got the air box sitting in here, piped up into the turbo there. We've got both inner cooler pipes in and out. We've got the battery box holder sitting there. Heaps of stuff coming together. It's getting very exciting. We'll be back Monday. I'm pretty sure on Monday we're starting the wiring. Back again on the Monday. We've got another big day on the 80. Josh is starting the wiring. So while Josh is getting all set up here, coming up with a plan of how we're going to make a barrel work in the 80, Berto's getting to work with the oil and water yeah. feed in, feed out of the turbo. This Put is on. the first fitting I'm putting on, so it's the oil drain. And we've got water lines. So water lines are a banjo fitting. And I know we've said it previously, but the reason a turbo needs oil into it, water into it, is to cool it. Cool and lubricate. Yeah. So there's bearings in there that need to be lubricated and the coolant cools it. The oil also cools it, but the coolant cools it more. Fittings are on. Now I can bolt it back in and work out all our hose lengths. So we've got our hose. So this is the oil return line. So that's why it's a bigger line. It's dash 10 and this is 200 series race works. Yeah, and we've gone braided line. We've gone braided line because- Biggest fast over rubber line. Yeah, it doesn't perish, it doesn't get old. And if you're out in the bush, which probably not gonna happen, it's not gonna catch a stick <laughs> and then rip your hose. So yeah. this, this is just, you know, it's a safer, better if you hit alternative. A, if you hit a shopping trolley in the Coles car park, that'll handle it better. Yeah, exactly. And then look at this, we've got the special soft soft, soft grip. jaws in the clamp so we don't damage any of the fittings as well. Yep. I've got the olive. We're gonna so what you do is you get the hose, you pull this back a bit so this can go on. This will slide in. He's home. Now we're gonna fold him onto here. Boom. That's one. The so next step will be sit that there, I'll go down the bottom, I'll screw him on, and then I'll point him up, get him to go up here, and then I'll figure out the length, and then I'll cut it. And... So we got this special tool as well for chopping, chopping the braided line. First line done, oil return. Three more lines to go. Well, so the amount of fittings you use in a build like this is insane. There's all the Raceworks fitting. We've got a box over there. They're just pulling piles of fittings out of that we've spent a long time ordering. Long time. <laughs> yeah. I probably don't even have them. Oil and water lines are done for now. We still got to do the oil feed in. We realise we're missing one fitting for that. But next little job to tick off, what do you got now? Thermostat house, uh, the thermostat house, and we bought a one from Raceworks. It's a swivel one, so you can pivot it wherever you want. Uh, normally, if you're running the front face and manifolds, they're a bit higher. They run straight into them, so you have to run them. But for our case, we can't find a hose that goes from here to here. 
So I've got one that I can turn and then it'll just be a straight run. Yeah. So if we need any sort of, between the one we're making down here and that one, we can just get a piece of hose for a spare in the car if it ever blows. We've got it, it's easy, easy to get. Easy fix. You, you get right. any hose. What's, what's going on, Sean? We've got a special here? guest. He always turns up here. Keeps an eye on the, keeps an eye on the place. Yeah. Keep an eye on Birdo. Yeah. You've got to keep an eye on me. <laughs> mate, I've been making lines. I've been doing all You've sorts. You've been making lines? Yeah, mate, them lines for me, mate. I've been making lines instead of snorting them. <laughs> 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 Look, that's what I was getting at, but. So we've got Josh here from Wyside Auto Electrical. How are you guys? We have a territory loom going into a Toyota with a barrow in it. So we need to get that working. How, how are we going to do that, Josh? All right, so it's going to be a bit of a process of elimination. So we're going to start with the ECU. We've got the main engine side wiring harness here. We've got a whole series of strip down cabling. What I'm doing at the moment, I'm basically stripping out all the unnecessary stuff. So we've stripped all the ABS, the blinker circuits, all the bits and pieces that we don't think we're going to use in this build. Uh, so we do away with that. And then I'm going back and forth like from a whole bunch of paperwork here for pinouts, working out what we need, what we don't need. Basically just go through, I found like a main supply wire for the ECU. We've got a whole bunch of smaller grounds. We've got a main ground supply that goes to the ECU. Um, and then from that, the ECU's outputs all to the engine. And then we have to tee in the shifter yeah. Uh, throttle pedal. Shift the throttle pedal, OBD plug. OBD plug, they're the main three things that yeah. we have to try and do. So we want to be able to scan it with the scan tool, see if we can pull faults, DTCs, etc. Engine lights, we want to try and make it factory as best as possible. Next little job we're going to do is we have the new bonnet, which is freshly painted, but there's nothing underneath oh, it. Oh yeah. So, car builders People. got a under bonnet insulation, premium sound and heat insulation. So the idea behind this will be that it will stop heat and noise coming from the engine and just make it look pretty. Stop that from looking like shit. Yeah. Looks like Sean's in for the install he's, on he's, this he's one. He's taller, he's taller. What do, you, what do you have to say about it? No words. He's speechless. That's how beautiful I am. <laughs> uh, let's go, let's go. Bring her over. Wait, wait. Woo! Two seconds. You need it. You know what would make this heaps easier? If we had the bonnet off. This is why you can't have Todd around here, you know why? She gotta pull it back off and do it properly. Might actually get some work done today without Toddy yapping in my ear. Is that thing going or what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shit, shit, yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Todd's getting ripped, mate. Did you hear? Did you watch that Sunday video? Getting on top of it now, because Birdo's not here today, so we can get some shit done. <laughs> <laughs> no talking. Haven't got him distracting yet. Yeah. This is either gonna look really good or really shit. I don't know if it's, a, it's not the material, it'll be the installers. Yeah. Oh, here we go, big dog's ripping out the that, Not yet, mate. Not, not yet, yet. Look, you're too look keen, you're too keen. This time. Remember how you said, should I get one? And I was like, nah, nah, nah. No, nah. No. Well, this time, he said, should I get one? I said, might as well just get one. <laughs> we've done that many car builders, installs now. You know, the first couple of times we budgeted, by the time we've done the third or fourth one. I was just trying to save you money, we but thought, now. We thought we might as well just get it. Now I'm thinking, Tyler, stuff you, eh? You can just pay for it. Yeah, I did arts and crafts and sewing at school. You know, in the last episode, mate, people were impressed with your restoration skills, but they said, hey, bud, what about these rusty bolts? Yeah, I've seen that. And guess what, mate? They're specific bolts. Where are you going to get them from? <laughs> sandblast them. Mate, don't, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> and then once they're sandblasted, they go rusty even quicker. Unless you get them like a re zinc coated. No one in, in Port Macquarie does zinc coat, so. You know, we're doing what we can with what we got. We don't even have a voice, mate. If you can do better, you come do it for free in your own time. <laughs> what, Todd chew this off with his teeth or something? Lucky he's got good teeth from yapping too much. <laughs> he, he started something he, sh he shouldn't, have, shouldn't have started, didn't he? He started, you're gonna finish it. This is exciting. We're gonna actually have oil in the engine. I'm not that excited about it. I have oil in all my engines. <laughs> <laughs> Probably thinking, why am I pouring that from that into that? This thing's got a funnel. Because Paul heaps better, mate. It's easier. Look at that fancy shit, all right? Oh. Yeah, but the pressure's on. There's no pressure when you're a smooth criminal. You got some plug in? Oh! 
Pressure's on now, double check. Is it, is it? Is it done up? I don't know if it's done up, but I'll check it now. Boy. Check it. Check Mate, it. It's, it's Mate, the turned, car's sending it. Look at it, look at it, it's everywhere. It's turned to chaos here. There's oil all over the car. We don't know the sun plugs on. What's going on? We thought Todd was the yapper. What's going on? Will the oil make it into the engine? Hands oh, on it. Supervise you or no? Goff idiot. Couldn't supervise a brothel if you had goggles on. Let's go, boys. Boys. It's on, it's on. on. Try and get it in this time. Yeah, go get a clean rag, would you? Make yourself useful. You haven't done anything else around here. While Berta had been getting through a bunch of small jobs, Josh from Wireside had been getting all of the wiring loom done, and now he was ready to start installing it into the 80. So next day, uh, the boys have been at it for a few hours, so I'll get Berta to do a little update on what's been going on. So I had to go try and figure out some of the small odd jobs that you don't really think about. Vacuum to the booster goes from the intake manifold, so I went and got some vacuum hose. It runs from the bottom, it comes around the back, comes up, connects to the factory um, hard line, which goes over to the brakes. So that's that thing that I got done. What else I got done was two vacuum lines, one for the boost gauge, and it runs from the same spot all the way up along the back over to where we had the sensors. And then I've also got one for boost reference. So with a turbo car, when it comes on boost, you need the fuel pressure to raise with boost pressure, otherwise the injectors don't squirt properly. So that goes up to the fuel pressure regulator. So it also goes down, there's three, three ports on the bottom of this, I think you remember from me installing it. And then it comes straight up to this. So they're all bunched up together nice and tidy. That's three small jobs you don't really think about done. And then I'll give the camera to you and you can film Josh and run through some of the stuff you guys been doing. Oh, what have we been doing? Righto, so what we've done, I stayed back till about midnight last night while you guys went home. Tried to finish this harness with conflicting information off the internet. <laughs> nah, what we're doing, we're, we're, we're going to try and send all the supplies from the ECU that we need into the interior. I've sort of gone through, I think I've buzzed it all out right, pinned everything out, sent it through the firewall, we'll take some supplies off the key barrel, we'll try and power everything up. The whole engine harness is all plugged in. All our connections are all sort of done here. Yeah, so this is, this is a pretty time-consuming job, this uh, wiring stuff. Yeah. Like I said, midnight, mate. You went home at it's, 6. Yeah, I went home like no, 5.30, really? mate. And yeah. I left you here. Midnight. You had to make sure no one was going to take your wires. What's, what's next, mate? What, what's going what's on here? What's next, some nice pipe on Friday, here, I was away. I wasn't talking to Todd, so he actually got some work done, yeah? <laughs> we got some intercooler pipes done. He's, he's welded them seamless. They're beautiful. Rolled beads. Hey, you paid top dollar for that. And look, this one's even hard mount, it's got a bracket. Ooh. Ooh. The bloke's got some fabrication skills. Yeah, I reckon he's gonna have to redo my car, free of charge. Yeah, so yeah. Todd took them home Friday, he's dropped them back off to us, they're all done. Yeah, so we can do pretty much a final mount to them now, we've got our holes done up. Not very user friendly, is it? At least you're not gonna f***ing come off. Yeah. Can't get <laughs> Might not even need clamps. Yeah. Get him, Fido, get him. Oh, oh, come on. Ooh. Can I put a battery in this and power this up? We've got a big moment here with Josh. He's about to test something. What's going on? I'm just going to see if it cranks off the key. It's all wired through the ECU's harness, and I hopefully I've done it right. So. Oh. Oh. It cranks. She cranks. Look at that. Show, show the viewers. How the earth on it. Negative ground is on, the, the terminal's on, sorry. That's the newest and bestest um, battery terminal from SP Tools. Yeah. It's a vice grip, bloody <laughs> part number SP32608, mate. Uh, well, that's a good sign. So that, that's, uh, yeah, that yeah. cranks, uh, how are you? Beautiful. Next test, we're going to see if the fly by wire throttle works. So Josh has had to wire this all the way into the car on the pedal. So we're going to turn the ignition on and see if it moves or what, what the deal is. Nothing. Nothing at all. I, uh, I missed the ground wire. So Didn't hook it up. Hook the ground wire up, Nick heard it click, 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 and he's like, oh, sweet, cool, throttle body works. As you can see, that's click, it's clicked open now a little bit because it'll be set to its idle setting or whatever. If you pedal it, I want to I wanna see limited bash right now. <laughs> you want to see a quick little linny? Yeah. Yeah, see that wide open. There you go. Da, 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 boom! Get out of bed. Right out the block. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be first drive. Can we can we do something else too? Cause it's it's killing me. I just want to know if it's gonna run. You gonna start your bastard? Yep. Okay. 
Let's go. Bastard. Let's, let's go. Big moment. We're just going to see if it's going to fire or have spark. And we got no fuel, so... This is fuel. This is fuel. How's that work? Well, this is start your bastard, so it's like... It's ether in a can. Yeah, okay. So, so it's very flammable. It so it, it replaces your, your fuel. Like, it'll just start on it. Yeah. If it's got spark. Right, Alex. Let's, let's try again. Give it one, one little throttle open without cranking, and I'll get some in there. Why don't we have spark? Oh, the cam sensor's back to front. Need uh, fuel, which we got in the can. Need spark, which we don't have. I've got a spark plug in the end of the coil. So your spark plug earths out through the threads. So you hold the threads down onto anything that's earth. So you block metal, turbo. As it's cranking, it should be pulsing spark between the electrode and the tip. Yeah. It's not, so. You've got no spark. Yeah. We're checking to see if it has injection pulse. So your injectors also pulse. They get a signal from your crank sensor and then the computers know when to do it. So we're gonna put it in. This will, if this lights up, we know it's getting that. And then we know that circuit of the ignition system and fuel system's good. So we're, do, we're doing trial and error and just ruling things out one at a time. Yeah. So we got injection pulse. So the crank sensor works, so we should technically have spark, so. Why don't we have spark? So, so if, we, if we've confirmed we've got injection pulse, right, we're on the right track. Yeah, so technically it should have that. We should, we should have sparks. I'm so thinking now, the only reason we don't have that, if that's all going to be off the same circuit, mm -hmm. it'll be a mobilizer. Yeah, I can they see it. Do they, do they can spark? I think like they, they do. I think that's what they don't go. I thought we sent that away. We did. So that's why it'd be, if, if we had that oh. thing read and we'd be able, it would come up and say like um, a mobilizer or something like that. I got the key on, so the ECU's on. We should have power. So we got nothing on that guy. Nothing on that guy. Nothing on that guy. So we got no power to the coils. What have I forgotten to wire up? Is there a random power or a random motor? Probably. Diagnostics 101. You gotta think, there's a lot of wires here, right? <laughs> and yeah, we're, we're figuring it out. This is, all, this is all part, this is pretty normal engine conversion wiring situations. Right, so we haven't got power or ground going to the coils at all. So that, that sort of led you to believe that what, maybe something else needs to be wired up. If it was a mobiliser, you think it would still have ground or power. They wouldn't cut both short. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. I'm just in the chat. It's him. Heads of power. She's all good. She's got power now. Yeah. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Spark thing. Yeah. How's that boys? We got it we got a starge. She She's goes. running. Yeah, she goes. What a weapon. What a relief. Yeah, excited. You're not happy now. You're not stressed. I uh, know, there's still a lot of work to be done, so <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a big step, but that's a the biggest issue that we were sort of having before when we couldn't get it to start is the coils have their own separate power supply, um, which is not part of the ECU. So it must get a power supply from the cabin in the Falcon or the Territory from a different location to where everything else comes from. The ECU uh, pulses ground, but the coils need a uh, constant um, power. switchable power. So you turn on and off with the key, so there's no draw, but and what, Sorry, we've just we've just tested heaps of work we've done. Valve springs, they're not falling out. It started, so they're good. Mm. Time and things, they're good. Heaps more work to do, but that is very very exciting. We finally have the car will actually start and run now. Lots of wiring, whole fuel system to work out, and a so billion we, small jobs to do. Give it a bit more. Give us some more go-go jobs. Go All right, you ready? Yeah.
<laughs> Jerry can on the roof with the triple <laughs> system. <laughs> we won't run fuel, it'll just be dry and nice. We'll just get a hundred cans of start, you bastard, everywhere we go. That'll get us to the coals. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded good either one. Yeah, yeah, it does sound good. It wasn't, wasn't slack. It's, it's got a good good little note. Big rumble on her. Is that straight off? <laughs> Josh is going to keep smashing through this wiring. Got the Ford Territory computer mounted up there. And that's pretty much like the engine, all the engine loom stuff done. So now he's going to spend a bit of time making it all neat and nice. Uh, we've got a heap of stuff from car builders. So this is the first time we're using Pro Loom heavy duty self closing wrap. We've got the underbody loom tape stuff as well. What my plan is to use the, the Pro Loom and then I'll tape up each end and we'll try and yeah. pretty up this section of the harness a little bit. It's going to be, what is it now, cable management? A little bit of cable management. Your yeah. favourite. My fave. Yeah. My favourite. So so we've got the OBD plug, which is going to be tucked up into the corner here. Um, I've got some main power supplies coming from the, uh, from the key barrel. So we've got a constant power, a switching source, a ground, and a crank. Uh, so those three wires, I've just dummied them up on fuses just for testing purposes, but I'm actually going to put a couple of relays in the corner of the cab just underneath in the kick panel. Um, we've wired up the shifter as well, and then I've also sent this one across. This is the throttle pedal, and that goes right across as well. And then all these harnesses will be sort of tucked up on the, behind the scenes. I've just run down to the Bursons and got some parts, do heater hoses and radiator hoses. So, top radiator hose, this is just off a of Subaru Forester, like a two litre Forester. It was a bit longer, it was too long, so I've just, I've got that, we've cut it, and made it fit. So. Simple as that, top radiator hose done. It'll be done with a clamp and, you know, a bit of fiddling. Uh, one of the heater hoses I've got, this was off the Territory. I'm pretty sure it was already like a transmission cooler, oil cooler hose. Mm -hmm. The Ford has a bigger hose than the heater hose on the Toyota. So I've just got that little brass barb up there, you pan up to the front of the car. That fella. Yeah. I've got one of them in here, which is a reducer, and then I've clamped him and a little straight piece of hose. Put that on, I'll show you that later. And then this one here, VR Commodore, most common car in the world, right? Yeah. This fits. Perfect. It goes from over here, down around the back, all the way on. So I'll get it on and we'll show you how it is. And then that's that, that's two jobs done. Couple more ticked off. Easy. Next wiring job here from Josh Wireside. Yes. Well, <laughs> well, actually, look at this. We got some nice uni lugs on the battery. They're looking beautiful. And so, then, is that what you're running now, battery, or is that a starter motor so wire? This is a starter motor wire. We'll put a big juicy battery in, some juicy cable. We'll upgrade some grounding points as well, and then this thing should crank over really fast. Yeah. So we don't want it to crank slow, um, especially you know once you get a tune, and if you do do ethanol down the future things like that, you want it to crank nice and quick because we yeah. don't want the ECU to drop out under crank. No one wants a slow cranking motor, so let's, we've got the opportunity. you got some big, big cable there, yeah, going to crank real fast. Winch cable, mate. Yeah. Winch cable. Where did, where did it come from? Mate, this came where from, did it come from? This came from Timmy and Tazzy. Yeah, have a go, turn around for just a second. Yeah, look. Check it out. This is probably its cable from Tasmania. So this is cable I brought all the way home from Tazzy 12 months ago when I did the winch on the GQ, we bought a big roll of it down there. Yeah. We brought it home, we said we'll use that one day. And now, and we now are. it's making now a barra. Starter motor cable for a barra. <laughs> yeah. Alternator is on the driver's side, not the passenger side, uh, like an FZ. So we're basically just going to cut this down. Um, I'll extend this across with the new uh, power supply run that we've done um, under the rad support there into this one. And then I will get online, find out the um, the voltage reg orientation on this guy, and then we'll just match the Land Cruiser one up to the Falcon one, uh, just by changing the wiring here. And then we'll have an alternator. Yeah, we'll have a working alternator, and we should have a working battery light on the dash as well. So it's coming, in it's fresh. Come, coming together quick now. It's getting there. It's coming up six o'clock, so we're going to finish up there for the day. I even got myself a haircut today. Plenty went on, but massive day on the 80. Last couple of days we've got heaps done so most of the wiring is done now so huge thanks to Josh. Wireside is smashed it out. A little bit of tidy up fiddly things but all the engine wiring looms done it turns on it runs once we get fuel to it we'll be able to actually sit here and idle it. It'll probably sound like crap till it gets tuned 
Um, all the main lines are run for like alternator, starter motor, battery. There's just lots of fiddly stuff going on that I'm not going to film everything, but I try and sort of get what I can. Like, but it's just mucking me out of the power steering at the moment with that intercooler pipe. Todd did. It's very close to the power steering, so we're trying to get all the lines to fit now and stuff. We've still got the fuel system to go, which is a big job, but we are getting there with this yeah. 80. What have we got? We've got trans cooler, power steering, fuel system. That's probably the three main ones. We'll have to put a fan on this, but we got yeah. coolant's pretty much plumbed. Yeah. One more heater hose to sort, or one more radiator hose to sort. We've yeah. got heater hoses done. One more oil line to do. Not, nothing too crazy. Yeah, it's getting there. So I'll be back in a couple of days with Todd. I just got to work out what we're going to, we need to work out what we're going to get Todd to do on Friday. Well, what's priority. So I'll be back on Friday here with Todd and we'll keep going. You know, if you're going to take cool TikToks on the beach and that, you're going to have to just let me drive it. Because you can't drive. You're being. If I said to you right now, as soon as the engine conversion's done, we're going to do another one. I'll tell you to get <laughs> So I quit. Mate, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it anyway. You've got trauma from this one. Yeah. <laughs>